press opportunities did Amber have prior to the Depp Waldman statements? So the, the press really loved working with Amber. She was on the cover of many magazines after The Danish Girl, after Justice League, after Aquaman. She was the cover girl, I think it was, of um, Marie Claire or Elle in, in the UK. She had a cover story of a big magazine in Mexico and Australia. They were, you know, some magazine, one magazine called her Woman of the Year, another one called her Role Model of the Year. So she got a lot of press. You know, she did a lot of press, both in magazines, but also on the press tours and the press junkets that she did for the films. And, and were some of those California style, Marie Claire, Elle, uh, Shape? Elle, yes, Elle there was a lot of them. leading. Overruled. There was a lot of them, so I, I'm not, I you know, don't remember all of them. But it was, you know, GQ, L, Marie Claire, you know, the big magazines, both here, the UK, um, East Euro Eastern Europe, in Latin America, and in Australia. Smiling and, and what laughing. about after the release of Aquaman, which was December 2018? How was her press then? Well, the press tour was doing well, and they wanted to give her a lot more press. And I think up until the defamatory statements came out, she was on deck to do a lot of press. Uh, and then That's not irrelevant. Objection, no foundation. Overruled. Please continue. So the press and the request for press went silent after the defamatory statements were made, and which then the negative social media campaign ensued after that. Now. What factors relating to social media does the enter entertainment industry rely on when considering an actor for a role? Social media becomes a big part of how studios decide to use an actor. One point two million negative statements between April of twenty twenty and November or January of twenty one. That's a lot of negative publicity. And it and there was just a lot of what I'm we call gonna, noise around um, Ms. Heard and her work of any kind. Can you please describe to the jury what Who's negative next? what a negative social campaign is? So a negative social campaign would be when a a fan base or in this case according to both the forensic statistical analyst as well as Ms. Hurd's agents and pro uh, the product that she was working with L'Oreal and her publicist, MDM. it was a campaign that included both live uh, accounts, live Twitter, you know, people that actually have are individuals as well as what we call Objection. Pods. May I be heard? All right, here come. I got to go back for this also. I'm, I'm super tired. Um, I just think that overall she's being a little bit dishonest uh, for no reason. I think that they, for some reason, I don't necessarily agree with them uh, going on a stand and as professionals making like um, dishonest statements. All right. Other than the bots, please describe the rest of the social media, the negative social media campaign. The bots. What's the bot? fan base was very energized by Mr. Is it the Depp Wald State? Depp yeah, let me let me just the ask Depp you. Waldman. I'm I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. I, There's I a lot in my brain I, right now. It doesn't matter. Why don't I do this? Let me formulate a different question. How has the negative social media campaign been used against Amber Heard? since the Depp Waldman statements. Great. So the negative campaign has been used both to, you know, let's fire Amber off of Aquaman, to the product that she was had an endorsement contract with with L'Oreal, 
the makeup. And every time that L'Oreal mentioned Amber Heard and the product together, they would get harassed. Her publicist company was harassed. Uh, any kind of movie that she was related to or television project that she was related to got negative attention. So you're going to blame third world. parties? Even the, uh, the charities that she was involved with were getting hammered, if you will, or bombarded by negative social media, which made it difficult to work with Amber on any level because negativity was brought to their product service or... So you're going to blame uh, the fans. Okay. And... Is that negative social media campaign ongoing to this day? Yes. Okay. And you were talking a little bit before, I think, about uh, uh, remove Amber Heard from approach. Aquaman 2. What were your observations with respect to that in connection to the Waldman Depp, the Depp Waldman statements? Again, the, the, the statements, uh, I'm sorry, the social media campaign, whether called, you know, remove Amber from Aquaman or, you know, neg negativity for her relationship with that film, her. it always tended to use Disney words that were inside the defamatory statements. They became Lord hashtags, her. right? So, you know, if it was said in, this, in, the, so in the, the, fans, the defamatory statement, it's different than the company. reiterated in the tweets and the posts. Okay. How difficult is it for an actor to repair this type of negative social media? Well, first of all, it has to stop. Very important to know. Okay, so once it center. stops, then an actor and their team can work slowly and patiently in both, maybe it's press interviews, maybe it's relationship with charity, maybe it's a small role in a movie and they do well and they, they kind of rebuild their career, but it can take two, three, four, five years or more to rehabilitate your career. But first and foremost, it needs to stop. The, you know, it, it just needs to stop so that they can, the, the consumer can get beyond it and then they can reactivate their career by doing their work again. Describe Amber Heard's reputation after the Depp Waldman statements. Well, the reputation, I guess, depends on who, who you're talking to, but in the public, it's been very negative. Um, in the industry, they like her work, but it's very, they can't work with her right now, again, because every time her name is mentioned, the negativity flares up again. So it doesn't make sense for them to try to make a movie which costs millions of dollars. And Where's the spine? Towards the film or the TV show or the product. So her world has been... Fuck the fans. Fuck the outrage. Stand up and say, fuck you guys. And even things that, that she wanted to work on are no longer available to her. Okay. Has Amber been able to obtain roles after the Depp Walden statement? They will statement? still consume and they know that. For a long time, no. Anything Amber else is, is irrelevant. She was able to do a small independent film um, from some people out of, um, who get their financing out of Europe. Uh, but up until that, no, she has not worked. Outrage Andy on Twitter. Do not no. depict the fan base of anybody. Based on the fact Dog that shipping. Amber came out of Aquaman, what should her opportunity, what would you have expected following the release of Aquaman December 2018 uh, up to what's going on now? I like to call Aquaman really, you know, Amber Heard's star, star is born moment. It was that moment where not only was she a good actor, but she was now world-renowned because she was in the most successful film almost of all time if not all time and certainly for DC Comics she was on the poster with the very handsome Jason Momoa and they were this couple and she was strong and beautiful and it was just this extraordinary moment for her to, for her to career to take off right you know her agents were excited the producers were excited on uh, everybody just wanted to hit the ground running and let's do more let's do more work what if anything happened to Amber's participation in Aquaman 2? So for a moment in time, in February 2021, uh, there were conversations that Amber's, I'm going to be technical with you, her option for employment was not going to be exercised. So they may not have hired her again, even though she had a contract for it. There was some question as to whether she was going to be hired again on Aquaman 2. All right. And did ultimately then she still get hired for Aquaman 2? 
She did. Her management team fought very hard, and they ultimately uh, ended up hiring her, but also not only because of what her management team did, but Jason Momoa, the star. Wait, but there's no argument to, and she's not in it. To her so in therefore, no damage, right? Objection, no foundation, hearsay. Right, right. Don't say hearsay. what the email said, just summarize it or describe it, please. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand this world. Um, so. Her management team worked hard, and Jason Momoa what? and the director were adamant that she was in the Objection film. Objection hearsay. Worked hard to be in the film. Your Honor, she has to be able to say that. But, well, sustain as to hearsay. Okay. Right. Question. So what, if any, uh, assurances did Mr. Momoa and Mr. Juan give Amber that she would be in Aquaman 2? Objection hearsay. Sustained. What, if any, uh, are you aware of any chemistry issues uh, between Amber and Jason Momoa from Aquaman? According to the fact that they did a chemistry test with Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard and Jason Momoa in order for her to be hired, that is a good indication that they thought the two of them had good chemistry. Uh, obviously, when you look at the movie, they have good chemistry, and the poster, they have good chemistry. So I think it's general like awareness that they have good chemistry. And what, if anything, uh, would also suggest, uh, with respect to Aquaman 2, uh, that Jason Momoa believed they had good chemistry? He wanted her in the movie. Um, okay. Should, I, think, saying. I think she she has to be able to rely on Sustained. I'll strike it from the record. Uh, in your review of all of the record evidence, what, if anything, did you say see in writing anywhere that there was ever any chemistry or creative issue with Amber Heard and Jason Momoa from Aquaman 1? There were no communications whatsoever that there was no chemistry okay. between the two. And, and what, if anything, did you, in all the record evidence, did you see that the producer or Jason Momoa did not want Amber Heard in Aquaman 2? I did not see any evidence of that. Okay. In fact, the opposite, correct? Correct, again. I Overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, what, if any, leverage did Amber Heard have to renegotiate her salary under the circumstances of the discussions you were talking about with not exercising her option. She had zero leverage. She was fighting for her life to stay in the film. Okay. Now, is it typical for an actor to be able to Wait, negotiate an increase in their salary after a successful franchise? So you may know this already, and so I apologize if you've heard it before. I don't know what's been brought to your attention, but in a franchise such as a potential franchise as Justice League and Aquaman, the Customs and practice is that the uh, studio will make a an agreement with the actor that incorporates potential future films. So if Justice League does well, they want to know what they're going to pay the actor for the next one and the next one and the next one. And in those uh, successive terms in the contract, the fee for that actor customarily goes up. It can go up by 10%, 20%, 100%. A double, what have you. And in the case, as um, uh, Ms. Kovacevic stated in her testimony, that in a successful franchise, that a movie that's made a billion dollars, the actors' uh, agents will go back and try to renegotiate that upcoming price tag. So if it was going to be X, they might want it to be 2X or 3X. And that's very standard in the industry to renegotiate your contracts when there's many films in one single contract that each have their own price points. Okay, it makes sense, yeah. What if any other actors in Aquaman 1 were able to renegotiate their contracts? Uh, Jason Momoa renegotiated his contract very significantly from Aquaman 1 to Aquaman 2. Do you know roughly how much more? Uh, it went up from the, you know, let's, uh, somewhere between 3 and 4 million to 15 million. Okay. Five Did X, Amber have a contract for Aquaman 1? Yes. How much was she paid for Aquaman 1? Aquaman 1, she was paid $2 million. Okay. And if, if, and did that same contract uh, provide for if she was in Aquaman 2? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Aquaman 1, I believe she got $1 million. Aquaman 2, she was supposed to get $2 million. I apologize. The numbers, there were a lot of numbers in that one contract. So Aquaman 1, it was $1 million. Aquaman 2, it was going to be $2 million. All right. Now, based on your experience uh, and knowledge in the industry, how much would Amber Heard have been able to negotiate uh, her contract but for the Depp Waldman statements? For Aquaman 2, I'm asking. Right. Well, as you can see from Mr. Momo's contract, that went up exponentially, up to $15 million. Uh, Ms. Heard, I don't know if she would have gotten $15 million for the movie, but she certainly could have increased it by one or $2 million or even doubled it. So if it was two, it could have been four or even five or six, depending on the enthusiasm if it had just rolled from Aquaman 1 to Aquaman 2 without any of this negativity that was created by the Walmart. Santa is sleeping 100 mil. Sales. What if anything happened to Amber's role in Aquaman 2 after the Depp Waldman statements? It was diminished. Oh, no. Now, why would Amber have been featured uh, more prominently in Aquaman 2? Objection, no foundation. If only a foundation. Okay. Um, what usually determines or uh, uh, people are consume you able Aquaman to because it's Aquaman. Speak to whether the Amber movie is dog should shit. have been or would have been more prominently featured in Aquaman two. Well, a couple things. Just wait, I, wait, I'm trying to get your foundation. Are you able to speak to that? Yes. Okay. And please tell the basis of that and then your opinion. So there's two things. When two actors do well in a romantic relationship and, you know, they get married or they're going to have a baby, you know, you want to follow that through because part of what did well in Aquaman was not only the action sequences, but to have a strong female character having a relationship with a strong male character, it's very empowering, right? So that was working for them in the first place. The poster of Aquaman that went around the world was the, one of the main posters was of the two of them together standing proud and strong. Right, being that couple. And so naturally, as you go and develop scripts in the industry, you want to follow on the things that are working. And according to Ms. Hurd, when she read the first script for Aquaman 2, she had a strong romantic arc for the entire film. And then she also got to do some great action sequences at the end of that storyline in that script. So she was per featured predominantly throughout the script of Aquaman 2 when she first read it. All right, and then what happened? Well, she didn't hear anything, so she wasn't getting the scripts when every when her colleagues were getting the scripts. She heard that through her agents. And then when she got the script, um, it was pared down from the first script dramatically. They had her in the hospital very shortly in the, uh, in the first part of the movie called Act One. They had her in the hospital, and they pretty much had her in the hospital, and then she was going to do this action, action sequence in the end. She trained five hours a day for uh, several months for the trainer to do this big action sequence. And then when Fuck she got off. to set, two things happened. One, the costume designer said, I don't know what happened to your role. It got diminished. Objection, and hearsay. Sustain. All right. All right. Go I'm ahead sorry. with the second okay. one. That's and right. more importantly, though, this big action sequence that she was going to do in, in the, at the end of the movie, in the third act, was cut out, and they took it away from her. So it was radically reduced from what it was in the script and what she even trained for uh, while she was preparing for the movie. And what, if any, changes were made to the storyline? I haven't seen the movie yet okay. specifically, so I can't really speak to that yet. All right, and when you say she was in the hospital, what do you mean by that? Was she injured in the first scene? I believe that in the, in the first act the of the movie, what is she this was shit injured somehow or has something to do with the baby. I don't know exactly. I'm just going with what Ms. Hurd told me about was that she ends up in, in the hospital early in this new Aquaman 2 movie and doesn't really come out till the end to kind of wrap things up. But okay, stop. all of the interactions with you know, Momo's character and the, certainly the action scenes were taken out. How has Amber typically been involved in promotions for her films? As we talked about earlier, actively involved in the press and the promotion, whether that was on the press junkets, what we call when they tour the world and, they, and the actors tour together and, and answer questions from the press at various screenings and film festivals. And then also she was you know, on the cover of magazines, usually after her, her movies, especially after oh, Justice this one. And how was the promotion of Aquaman 2 affected by the Depp Waldman statements? Amber has not been involved in any of the promotion that's been done to date, or very little, particularly in a, in a teasers that I've seen, we call, you know, short, 
little films about the making of and so forth. She's not featured in them. Prime. And okay. also, very specifically, Prime there was a Prime. big event that direct. Warner Brothers um, put on during the fandom. I think it's a DC fandom event, which is a big kind of like Comic Con style event. And they invited all of the actors, or the majority of the actors that had strong roles in film, to participate both in the posters and the artwork and also participate at, at, at DC fandom. And Ms. Heard was not invited to either be in the poster or be at the event. And in fact, they told her she cannot come. Now, can, can this hurt Amber's career, not being allowed to be in any of the promotional materials? Absolutely. I, it means that nobody knows about her. She doesn't have the same part in the film. It's not going to take her on to her next movie. She's not being associated with the tremendous amount of promotion that's going to be made for this, you know, movie that everybody's looking forward to see. So she's not a part of it because of this negative campaign. How have the Depp Waldman statements affected any other films or TV project promotions for Amber? So, uh, prior to the defamatory statements, but either around the, you know, after or around the time that Aquaman 1 uh, came out, she was in the, the TV show called The Stand. It was based on a Stephen King novel. So, big book, you know, going to be a big TV show. And again, uh, Ms. Heard didn't do any press or promotion for that for the same reasons. And what if any plans were there to have Amber Heard on the cover of L.A. Style uh, relating to Stan before the Deb Baldwin statements? Right. So Ms. Heard was in, and uh, they had done an article about her participation in this TV show, The Stan, the Stephen King novel uh, related uh, TV show, and they were going to give her the cover picture and cover story, and they took that away. I don't know if it even if the article existed, but they certainly took away the cover picture and the cover story. How have the Depp Waldman statements affected press requests for Amber? There aren't any. So, so yes, they affected it because there used to be a lot of press requests and now there aren't, aren't any. Has Amber Heard obtained any roles since the Depp Waldman statement? Again, uh, uh, for many years, no, for a good period of time, or a year and a half, two years, until she got this small movie called the Independ uh, Into the Fire. Has Amber obtained any studio movie roles since the Depp Waldman statements? No. How, if at all, have Amber's philanthropic opportunities been affected by Depp Waldman statements? Again, she Chat. had some passion Fifth projects. Prime. She was Fifth invited subs. to do some charity work, okay. I'm not she a, also had her own passion projects. I'm not a big mass you know, guy, that's going to be involved with and travel for. Uh, but they decided it wasn't going to be a good idea because every time she appears anywhere, Huge. the social media negativity cam, you know, campaign starts up again. So she hasn't been able to do any for charity work. Come on, what chat. is an endorsement? Plug it in. So an endorsement is when a, an actor associates himself with a product, either for print promotion or commercials, you know, like... Oh, charity. Jennifer Aniston doing the water, you know, or uh, Matt McConaughey doing the car commercial. That's a product endorsement. He's paid to say that the product is good and be associated with the product. How, how important are those endorsements to the exactly. actors in the entertainment That's huge. industry? Well, very, very Holy important on two when they bring a good amount of income to them when they're not shooting a movie, so it's a good way to make money in between film roles. And then also, it shows the studios and the production executives and the financiers that Ashton the Sam. actor is Thanks relevant in the community because they're chat. being associated with the product. So if it's a well-known product, that's really great. If it's a medium product, that's great, and so forth and so on. So you want to be, if you can, and if that's something that you like to do, not everybody does, but if they like to do that, then they can get a lot of um, value out of those product endorsements because then the studios see that there's a connection with the consumer, not just on the film, but also with product. Did Amber have any endorsement activities prior to the publication of the Depp Waldman statements? Yes. Please explain. So Amber was hired by uh, L'Oreal to be a product and uh, endorse their product, the makeup line. And she had a $1.5 million contract for two years. Um, and they were able to uh, work. They had 20 days of her work. You know, they had the right to, to work with her for 20 days. And uh, she started the work. And then when the defamatory statements came out, they essentially put a pause on working with her. So they no longer brought her to photo shoots. They no longer had her do public events for the product. And basically said, 
we love you, but we can't work with you right now because it's just too much. Objection money. hearsay. All right. Did she still get paid, though? I'll sustain the objection. No okay. question. Um, have, Mr. have the Deb Waldman statements affected that deal in any way with L'Oreal? Well, A, they put it on pause and haven't done any of the work, so she's not out there in the public eye related that to the That is not what she asked. And they uh, have decided to continue working with her at some point once, as I said, this all quiets down, this trial is over, and, and hopefully the negative campaigns will stop. Uh, so they extend well, her contract, they did not a, a the in chat and see what happens. And has Amber been hired for any other em endorsement deals since Women the Deb Waldman statements? No. Now, did you assess Amber's losses as a result of the Deb Waldman statements? Yes. What did you do to assess those? Well, first of all, I looked at Amber's career directly, so I wanted to see, you know, as I said earlier, she worked consistently, and then she was on this kind of very large upswing with the big movies, Justice League and Aquaman, and, and all Oops. of that, and the stand with the Stephen King project, um, and then I it stopped, different. right? So her work stopped. And then I looked at other actors that kind of grew up at the same time frame, grew up meaning they started their career and had the same time frame to start going from the smaller projects to the well-known director projects to the big movie projects. Oh my God, and I so looked dumb. at those actors and I then saw after they had their Star is Born moment, if you will, I wanted to see where their careers went. So I looked at several actors to see, including Jason Momoa, his, her, her co-star, to see what happened in their careers after such a successful film as Aquaman uh, came out. And why did you use that method of analysis? It's a very common methodology in the entertainment industry to work with what we call comps. I think Ms. Kovacevic even used that word comp. Um, for, so you, you know, with films, you try to find comparable films. With actors, you look to see comparable actors. So you can kind of, it's not a distinct actual, this is going to happen, but this is the probability with a reasonable certainty that with the right management team that she had and her acting ability and her looks and the press that she was getting and should have continued to get that her career would have been similar to these other actors. Have you used that method in other Surely. cases in which you've been an expert on damages? Yes, I have. Who did you select as comparable actors for your comparison? Well, I wanted to look at actors that were in superhero films that had done really well at the box office. So I, I looked at Jason Momoa, her co-star. I looked at Gal Gadot, who was uh, is, is in Wonder Woman. Uh, I looked at um, Anna de Armas, who was in um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Blade yes. Runner. Thank you, Blade Runner. Um, I looked at Zendaya, who was in Spider Man, and I looked at Chris Pine, who was in Star Trek and also Wonder Woman. About the you know similar age range, all attractive actors, all with good acting skills, all able to do stunts. So I was. It's not. There are not that many actors to look at who do superhero characters. So it was a small pool to work from, but I took a wide range from those actors, both men and women, to see what was what okay. could potentially happen to Ms. Hurd's career. Do you consider all of them to be identical for purposes of measurement? Well, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, no two actors are identical. You can only look with that within a range of characteristics and uh, work history, management team, and so forth. And, and we've heard from Mr. Banya. Uh, did you review Mr. Banya's Q-score analysis regarding the comparables you used? Yes, I did. And what, if any, opinions I have say, you but it is just you doing, Mr. Banyan? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Sorry. So Mr. Banyan looked at calendar years to assess so what happened in December of, you know, 2017 or 18 or 19, what happened in June, what happened in a very specific time frame, which works on some statistical analysis. But when you're talking about actors and their relationships to Q scores, Q scores are related to the actor's viability and the consumer's mind, if you will, how well known or how much they're coming up in conversation. And so Mr. Banny did not look at time periods of the actors that I compare them with to the film when it came out. So like right after the success of their big film, what was their Q score? But moreover, he just looked at them in a year range. So it doesn't coincide from actor to actor just because you look at it over time. You have to look at it specifically after each of those individuals box office success with a particular film, you look at the Q score high or low during that, and then you look at how low it drops 
say a couple months afterwards, and then if it comes back up, if they have another film or another event that brings them into the, the, the Top right limelight line. again. So it's not about time. It's a, a related to a specific activity or event, and he did not do that. Okay. What did your comparison show in terms of films that those actors had been in since their breakout roles? I'm talking about the comparables. In so, terms of their... I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand uh, Well, what what happened with these other actors after How many? they had their... So oh, unrelated to Q scores. Were, right, right, right. Oh, okay, sorry. So all those actors' careers, the ones I mentioned, they all either were a steady rise or even a meteoric rise in, in terms of where their career went after their star is born moment and they got some other good films and maybe they got another film that performed extremely well. So it was a range, but they all were on an upward trajectory without a doubt. And what does this mean for Amber? With a reason, I mean, the way that the... The, the kind of industry works is usually unless there is an, a force majeure or some really negative event, her career should have followed that same upward swing in, in about the same time frame, give or take six months to a year, but you, it would be very reasonable to, to believe that her career would have been on an upward trajectory. Unless she a, did something stupid. Of those other actors. Right? What if any comparisons did you make respecting endorsement What deals could possibly go wrong? Within? You know, again, all those actors that we've talked about all did multiple endorsement deals after their big movies or after their big series of movies. You know, Jason Momoa is on, you know, Rocket Mortgage and Harley Davidson as well as, you know, five or six other companies. Zendaya is Lancome and Fashion and Water and Jewelry and Gal Gadot and Chris Pine and, 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 and Anna de Armas. They've all done either a couple or many and all of them have associated with a large brand, uh, unlike Amber, who hasn't done even been able to work on the one contract that she had. She certainly didn't get any others. So what did your analysis show with respect to Amber Heard's losses, but for the Depp yeah. Waldman statements? Outlandish comparison. Significant. If, if we follow the trajectory of her you know, colleagues. Well, let's start with at Aquaman 2. What would she have realized there? Well, as I stated earlier, so um, from Aquaman 1 to 2, it went from a million dollars to $2 million, right? So that was a pre-written contract. It doubled. So the agents were very excited after the success of Aquaman to go and negotiate a much higher uh, fee like they did for Jason Momoa. They weren't able to do that. So in that instance alone, it was more than likely a $2 million loss just from that movie alone. Oh, so no. Two to four, you had said before. It could have been four. It could Objection have been six. leading. Sustain. Right. Okay. Um, what about other films? So once, as as Amber's agent, Ms. Kovacic, 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 I was doing okay. Uh, Ms. Kovacic said that once you get that quote of the $2 million from Aquaman 2, that kind of was like the baseline for any other movie she would have done. So any other studio movie would have started from there and depending on the so success none? of Aquaman and how much press she did, maybe she worked on another great director, independent film, whatever, that $2 million for a studio film and had it jump to $4 million, uh, The movie the didn't do well because of the acting. That then would have been the this basis. is just pure so delusion. Any studio film uh, that she would have done, any big budget film would have been the basis at $4 million and then most likely have gone up from there if she was able to get others which she should have just like the other actors let's talk about tv for a minute what would those losses have included well on the stand which was you know about the same time as aquaman but got the press and the promotion got cut off because of the defamatory statements and the negative campaign she got paid two hundred thousand dollars an episode on the stand so Guys, on a tv Toby series McGuire went episodes, hard on spider-man what about it's after? He did a couple good movies, but... So if she had, again, done other TV shows, it's very likely that whether she worked with a streamer or with one of the networks, that that fee would have you know, gone up from like, there. Come on now. would have been able to use the leverage of the success it's of a superhero. It's a fan base. It's an ideal. It's, it's, a, it's a story. Show, given rise to even a higher episodic fee, some actors go up to $1 million an episode. Jason Momoa's... Uh, in the in his TV show got one million dollars. So there's a, a you know an exponential range of where she could have gone. All right. What about endorsements? Same thing. You know, all the other actors were doing 
over the course of a couple years period, you know, anywhere from five, six, seven other endorsement deals. And Ms. Hurd realistically should have gotten endorsement deals in other categories. L'Oreal is makeup, so probably not in makeup, but maybe water or clothing or jewelry or wellness or it could have been anything else. And so she too That's should a have, lot of projections. with a reasonable degree of certainty, gotten other contract deals based on the success of the films that she's been associated with and the TV shows she's been and associated with. And what would that with. have translated into in terms of dollars? So in terms of dollars, okay, so if it was $1.5 million for L'Oreal for a two-year contract, and let's give her four other $1.5 or $2 million deals, which all those other actors you know, especially the ladies have gotten, then you're looking at an additional eight million dollars of income over time. I'm not saying this is in one period. Uh, We're looking speculation at as, far back as the defamatory statements of 2020 to now, which is almost two years. And again, as I said earlier, even when this is quiet, it will take three to five years for her to rehabilitate her career if she can. So we have to look at it as a period of massive a delusion. Of five years. Holy! So when I say eight million dollars for endorsement contracts, it would have been over time. Okay. Uh, Holy! What if any losses relating to production or film activities? Well, again, these other actors that we looked at, uh, and there's a wide range of them. Some of them did bigger films, and some of them did gigantic films, but. It is very reasonable to assume that once you are in an, an Aquaman-style film, you'll either continue to do those, right? Some of these franchises, as we know, go for five, six films, or she would probably have been in another studio film that had nothing to do with Aquaman. But again, so over the course of five years, it's very reasonable to consider that she would have been in at least one film a year at a minimum of $4 million because that's... What a what crazy sort of events for one and virtue signaling dog should op ed article. Contract had there, if there is a Aquaman 3, her price is set at $4 million. So it's very reasonable to assume and to believe that if she did a film a year for five years at a minimum of $4 million a year without any negotiation, which probably would have happened, but let's just say that baseline that would be another $20 million over that time frame. What, if any, opinions do you have about Amber Heard's earning power over time? That it, it would continue to rise. It's, it's customary in the industry, as I've talked about earlier, that the negotiations, uh, especially with her agents at William Morris, her fees would have gone higher. So I'm just using the baseline without any ability to foresee in the future that I already know she got negotiated for $4 million from Aquaman 3. So if we use that as a baseline minimum, but it very well would have gone up had her agents done the work that they wanted to do. Oh, wow. So combining all of these opinions and calculations Surely. that you've had, what if any range are the losses you are estimating for Amber Heard but for the Deb Waldman statements? Right, so again, it's really important that, that I looked at, and, and hopefully you understand this, that it's over time, right? So let's just say a minimum of five years that we're going to talk about these losses, and it could be more, Wait. but at minimum, if you look at the film, uh, many. the television, and the endorsement contracts, it's very likely that Ms. Hurd should have earned between 45 and $50 million over that time period. Are all your opinions to within a reasonable degree of probability or certainty? Yes. All right, thank you. The L'Oreal deal was 20 days. Afternoon recess, she says, gentlemen. Okay, not doing this lady is off her rockers. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, you can see you can step down. That's fine. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's all right.